Hello, and welcome to Animal Chat, an Alberta SPCA podcast, where we talk about animal welfare, animal behavior, and animal protection. I'm Dan Kobe, and thank you for listening and for being passionate about animal welfare and compassionate for the animals in our province. Our focus today is on a topic that is a difficult conversation, but it's an important one. As animal owners, we do not want our pets to suffer, and this means it's important to plan for the time when you need to say goodbye to your animals so that they do not need to experience prolonged pain in the late stages of their life, and so that you are in control of the situation instead of facing a panicked predicament. As we say here at the Alberta SPCA, it's the kindest thing you can do for your animals. Unfortunately, we do see too many situations where animals are suffering because their owners do not make timely decisions. My guest today to talk about this important topic is Alberta SPCA Executive Director, Tara Johnston, Tara, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much, Dan. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate the opportunity to speak about this uh, really important but difficult uh, discussion. So about a year ago, we came up with a campaign that we called Have the Courage uh, that was about this particular topic. Um, Perhaps I'll let you explain a little bit about what we mean by Have the Courage. Well, Dan, as you mentioned, um, this time last year, we we began that campaign. And I think at the time we were really considering horses in particular. Uh, we know that horses are a beloved companion for many Albertans. We know that when we are facing winter conditions, it becomes obviously bitterly cold. And, and we really, you know, for the aged animal or the animal that's slowing down and, and may not be thriving anymore, we were inviting people to have the courage to contemplate whether their beloved horse companion was able to not only just make it through the, the, the winter season, but thrive during the winter season. And so we really, we wanted that, that consideration and that reflection and, you know, in terms of that animal and what's best for that animal, recognizing that, you know, there, this animal is a, a beloved companion and, and, and sort of facing the months without an animal is, is a pretty hollow feeling and a pretty devastating feeling for, for people. I think many of us have known and lost beloved uh, companion animals. So we at the Alberta, un, Alberta SBC understand that, um, really well but we also recognize that when when these times come we have to make uh make make the decision in the best interest of the animal so we we're really encouraging people to have the courage to do that well a lot of people will and understandably so want to have every day every moment that they can with that beloved animal in this case a a horse um and and the thought of planning in advance before the cold weather sets in will be difficult for them. But why should they, I, why are we trying to talk them into uh, having that conversation now, as opposed to in January or February, when they may be able to have that horse for another three or four months? And, and that it's great if, if the consideration is made, you know, do we have appropriate feed, enough feed that it's not going to suffer unduly in, in the cold weather, that we, we've taken steps to mitigate everything. And if, if, if we can do that and, and, and uh, manage that, that's great. Some situations, though, are not that easy. And, and we, we've been there as, as a, an organization, we've seen the situations where individuals run up against sort of a, a panic type situation where, you know, the animal is down and, and truly suffering. And, and we don't want um, that sort of that memory of that animal, the beloved companion to be the last one for, for their, their people, their person. It's a, it's a really awful situation to be in when the decision could have been made months sooner. And, and maybe with a little bit of nudging uh, from us in terms of, you know, inviting people to consider that they could have avoided um, a situation where it's, where the individual's panicked and the horse or, or beloved companion is is suffering horribly as a result of a, a lack of consideration at the time. And again, the, we're not suggesting people don't don't care deeply. We're just saying, you know, again, looking ahead, um, you know, it's it's sort of it 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 requires some some solid reflection and some courage to give that 
uh, some consideration on, on what the, that animal's needs are and can those be provided in the coming months? We have this conversation in the fall for the obvious reason that the cold weather is coming and we can certainly feel it in the air right now. Um, and so that makes it timely for animals that will be outside uh, for a significant part of the winter. Um, but there's a version of this conversation that should happen for probably most companion animals, most pets, um, not necessarily related to the weather uh, or this time of the year, but just something that we would encourage animal owners to think about whenever they have a pet that's getting into those uh, geriatric years. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Dan. I think that we've seen, unfortunately, individuals who have, um, haven't planned for the eventuality of their pet coming to a point where, where something needs to be done uh, on behalf of that pet, that pet, a decision needs to be made. And sometimes it's a financial consideration and sometimes it's just a transport situation. I mean, when, when you think ahead and nobody wants to think ahead to that eventuality when we have to make a decision about our beloved pet, but, but if we do, how are we going to get there? If we don't have transportation, how are we going to pay for it? Um, you know, what does that look like in terms of, do, do you want to be there with your pet? And, and we, you know, we don't want to judge people one way or the other. I, I know I, I've had to, unfortunately, put down uh, a beloved companion of, of mine in the past. And, you know, all of those considerations around, you know, did I want to be there with the pet? And I certainly did. Um, you know, transportation, again, I mentioned that earlier and the financial cost and just, just how we want to honor that, that companion animal um, moving forward. So some of those things, if, if we take the time to give those, those items consideration, we can, we can better be prepared when, when that happens and we have a plan for, for what it looks like going forward so that, so that everybody, um, is a bit more comfortable, including the beloved companion animal. It's a difficult time regardless. It, uh, I guess we're encouraging people to be more in control of, of that situation so that it's um, as easy as it possibly can be to, to make your way through uh, what is a very emotional and, and heart-wrenching time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Tara, unfortunately, our peace officers see on a, on a somewhat regular basis where they are the ones who are uh, forced to say to a, an animal owner, a uh, pet owner or horse owner, um, the time has come. And a lot of times the time has, should have come probably a few months before. Yeah. And I, I mean, no one wants to be in that situation. I, I think that you know, people, as a general comment, dearly love their pets. You know, they, I think, given the opportunity and the thought, you know, you know giving the opportunity to, to reflect and think ahead um, would do so and, and wouldn't need, and I, I keep calling it a gentle nudge because in some cases our peace officers are able to do uh, and, and, and have a conversation and, and have a bit of a gentle nudge for that individual. In some cases, it's not such a gentle nudge where we're having to take an animal into protective custody to relieve their distress. And that's not something that our peace officers want to do. And I'm, I'm certain that the individual who has the beloved companion doesn't want that to happen either. So we're, we're ultimately taking the control out of their hands on that. But, but in some cases in the past, we've had to do it. And again, it's, um, it's not a good situation for anyone. So we're, you know, again, to avoid those type of situations, to avoid that, 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 you know, that horrible feeling of, of, you know, you're, you're having to make that decision eventually, but to add on some of those gentle nudges or not so gentle nudges, we don't, it, it just becomes um, really even more difficult than, than necessary. So again, really encouraging people to have the courage, think ahead, plan ahead, who's accompanying you, you know, how are you getting there? What does this look like? 
who's there and, and sort of how you're going to go about managing this is all really, really important factors in, in really um, something that, that it's our responsibility as, as uh, pet owners and, and, and uh, lovers of, of, of their companion animals. It's our responsibility. Animals tend to be pretty good at hiding when they're in pain a lot of the time. Um, and so um, sometimes you have to go looking for their discomfort. Um, at the end of it, uh, I think we would suggest that a, a, a frank conversation with your veterinarian is probably a good idea. If you think that your animal might be getting to that uh, stage of their life where um, the difficult decisions need to be made. Oh, yeah, I, I think that's a brilliant point, Dan. I, I absolutely, I think some some animals in particular are notoriously good hiders um, and survivors when it comes to these type of, of issues. So yeah, it, it is imp- really critical that you have a relationship with a veterinarian, and that you know when appropriate to have a discussion with your veterinarian who knows you and knows the pet to help you make that decision. Well, Tara, thank you for joining me today. I know this is not the conversation that uh, we want to have with people, but uh, hopefully uh, this podcast uh, allows us to have fewer of these conversations with people in Alberta at the most difficult time. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Dan. And if you found this episode to be valuable, we encourage you to check out some of our other podcast episodes, including one recently from September 17th on the importance of including your pets in your will. You can find that and others on our website, albertaspca.org slash news slash podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening and we'll talk again soon.